There's a big antique auto show coming up next weekend, and Brian Witt found a guy who's certainly ready for it. Craig Beak is all about the Model T Ford. He collects them, he loves them, he knows all about them. Here's a look into Craig's world. I believe I'd consider myself a car collector. I collect only one type of car, that's the early brass Model T's, and by brass Model T's, I mean the cars where Ford used a brass radiator. I'm, I'm an old farm boy from North Iowa, and I think Ford was kind of my hero. He was my kind of person, and these are the type of cars my family would have had. They wouldn't have had Duesenbergs or Packards. This would have been something my family would have had on the farm. And so it kind of brings me back to my roots to have a Model T, and I had one when I was only seven years old, and I've had them on and off over the years. And they're becoming very scarce. The, uh, there, was, there was a lot of Model T's made, and Ford picked up the production fairly rapidly. He started making cars in October of, of 8, and uh, quit making them in 27. Then during that period, he made 15 million Model T's. Well, it's neat to say that this is a car that really changed the world. Prior to the Model T coming along, people were pretty much restricted to the area that they would have been born and raised in. You know, a horse can only go so far, pretty soon you're only dating a girl so far from your home. A car like this, now you can date a girl in Chicago. I think the, the, the big thing I hear with people about cars is, I didn't realize Ford made multiple colored cars. They always talk about the Model T, you can have it any color you want as long as it's black. Well, that's an old wives' tale. He started making cars red and gray, and then blue, and then green. And finally, in 14, when he started the moving assembly line, he then went to the black because the black Japanese enamel dried faster than the, the reds. I, I tell people these things find me because I'm a fairly well-known national collector throughout the United States. So I get calls regularly saying I have a car that I'd like to sell. But every so often one comes along that you just can't save and so I've created a cemetery behind my, my building here to celebrate the death of a 1912 Model T Touring. The last rites will be performed on it and it'll probably never be restored. For me, it's a, it's a kind of an investment. A lot of people restore cars and then tour with them. And those are people that like to drive them. For them, they try to modernize them so they're reliable, dependable. These things have got all of the old, unreliable carburetors and stuff like that. So these are primarily show cars. I ease them onto a show field, have them judge, put them back in the building, and that's where they sit. It's kind of a labor of love, and, I'm, and uh, I, I have a business card that I pass out that says I'm preserving brass era Fords for future generations because some of the cars that I've picked up along the way would have gone basically into the scrap pile had I not come along and saved them. And you can see, I believe, 17 of his cars coming up next Saturday, Paula, at the AACA Grand National Car Show happening in downtown Moline right there on River Drive next Saturday. 11 to 3. Lots of other cars too with uh, with collectors and dealers yeah, from over all over. Yeah, 300 different cars will be coming to this car show. It's kind of like the Super Bowl of car shows. It's the national one, only happens once a year of course. And so all of the cars were judged at a local regional car show. Mm -hmm. So they get the qualification to come to this show. Craig's stuff is neat. Oh, it's fascinating to go And he's totally to in there. into it, right? Yeah. I think that was the exciting part, to see his passion and, and to know that he just truly loves the cars. What what makes a car an antique? Well, according to their standards, the car has to be, I believe, at least 25 years 25 old. 25 years old. Well, I think that means <laughs> Brian qualifies tomorrow. I do. I'm as finally an, an antique. As an antique <laughs> at age 25. Yes. And so um, I, I made you uh, actually several cupcakes, but there's one. There's one left. So you get one <laughs> wish one day early. One wish? Yeah. You got to make it right now, but you can't tell. And then you blow it out. That's how it works. Okay. I just, if I could only read his thoughts. No, you, no, you don't want to. You wouldn't no. want to go there. 